So, we are now in Divindu. We are at like this cute little spot right on the water. The water does not smell great, so we didn't really spend much time on this like huge deck that we have, but beautiful little view. Also just came out here and an owl just like flew off of the roof, which is cool. I'll have to try and look later to figure out what kind of owl it was. And yesterday was fully travel day from Atosha to Divindu, and today is another travel day, full travel day. So we're getting ready, gonna quickly have breakfast and then head out. We have to cross two borders today, so that will be interesting. Hopefully it goes smoothly. Uh, could just take a while. So it'll just be interesting to see how that goes. Uh, yeah, the last night was our first uh, real experience with bugs and some mosquitoes. So finally got out our bug repellent, but it still wasn't like too bad. They weren't really biting, they were just flying around, which is more annoying. But anyways, gonna finish packing up and then we gotta hit the road. We had breakfast at our hotel, getting to hang out with the owner's dog. We found out the owner was from Canada, so we had a nice visit with him. We then hit our first border crossing at Ngoma into Botswana. It was pretty straightforward, only taking about 30 minutes, and that's only because there was a tour bus that got ahead of us. We then drove about an hour, catching glimpses of wildlife here and there. We also drove by several little villages, seeing children walking home from school, or seeing people walking to get water carrying large buckets or barrels with them. We then got to our next border crossing at Kazangula into Zambia. This one was not so quick. As you're driving up there, there are a bunch of people waiting to offer you their services, explaining that they know the system and can get you through much faster, at a cost. We had heard about this and despite how insistent they were, we told them we were fine on our own. It was a huge building and there weren't many other travelers passing through. In total, we had to go to 13 different counters to give information. A lot of the time, it was the same information. Partway through, we had to go back outside for vehicle inspection. We had to pay two different times, one place only taking cash, which we didn't have, so we had to go find an ATM, which was luckily on site. The other one only took card. And then we still had to drive through a checkpoint where they looked over all the paperwork we had received. When it was all said and done, we were two hours in total. Our next destination for the next couple nights was Victoria Falls Waterfront in Livingston.
It was this little jungle paradise right on the water. The resort had a great little restaurant that not only looked over the water, but was very popular with the vervet monkeys. At this point, we had only had quick flashes of baboons while driving, so I was very excited to see some very pesky monkeys close up. We hung out on the patio and watched the sunset, getting to bed in good time because the next day was going to be a big one. We got up early and headed into town to meet up with our tour guide. Today we would be taking a dip in the Devil's Pool at the top of Victoria Falls. so many monkeys we just came from breakfast and that's the closest that we got to the monkeys last night they were like mainly up in the trees or on the roof of the restaurant uh, but we did have like a seat closer to the water and this one mother and baby were trying to get at our table and Jesse was shooting them off so we moved in and then we watched that same monkey go to another table and the women there were like a little afraid of it they were trying to shoo it but not before it grabbed the bun right off the lady's plate and took off so you gotta watch out for those monkeys but i love watching them i've never been around wild monkeys before so it's been fun i've enjoyed watching them and yesterday we drove from divindu we crossed the border into botswana drove through for maybe like an hour and then crossed the border into Zambia. The second border crossing was a process. I started like taking notes so I wouldn't forget. In total, there were 13 different counters that we had to go to to give different, well, I don't even wanna say different. A lot of the counters we had to give the exact same information. 13 different counters, part way through, we had to go back outside, have a vehicle inspection. And then <clears throat> at the end, we still had to drive through a checkpoint where they checked all the papers. I think the lady in front of us was missing one. It was wild. The entire process took two hours <clears throat> and that there wasn't even lines. Like at one point, we're the only people in this huge building with all these different counters. So 
that time is just how long it took to get to each station they had to go to. It was wild. We do have to go through a few more borders because we go into Zimbabwe and then we go back into Botswana, but there'll be different borders. We're just hoping that's the only crazy one. And when we first <clears throat> went from Namibia to Botswana, that border was easy peasy. There was a, a bus in front of us. So that's the only reason why it took a little while, but I think it was still only like 30 minutes, but there was actually a line of people. Today is a very exciting day. Today we go to Victoria Falls, to the Devil's Pool. Very excited. I was kind of nervous. I don't mind heights, but I remember the Grand Canyon. Like I was still a little nervous being close to the edge and this is a waterfall. But it's gonna be awesome, it's gonna be epic. And then tonight we have dinner with elephants so we get to interact with them, feed them, touch them. Oh my God, I can't wait. So uh, yeah, today's gonna be an amazing day. We parked the Jimny and then realized the parking lot was overrun with baboons. We were a little early, so we hung out and watched them. One even hopped up onto the top of the chimney, took a poop, and then headed over to the next vehicle, and then proceeded to rip pieces off of it. There was nothing we could do about it because these guys looked mean. Once our guide arrived and we signed our lives away, we headed out for our hike. There are two ways that you can get to the Devil's Pool. You can either take a boat or hike across the top of the falls. And we picked the hike. It took about 20 minutes to hike across and there were some pretty nerve wracking moments. You're walking across wobbly, slippery stones, sometimes walking through water, at one point only about a meter away from the drop off. But what a thrill. Once we made it across, we met up with our second guide who would actually guide us through the water while our first guide took pictures and videos. The Devil's Pool is a little pocket at the top of the falls that has a large ledge and very little draw. So once you're in the little pocket, there's no fear of getting pulled over by the current. Our guide showed us exactly where to swim to stay away from the dangerous current. And soon enough, we were right at the edge of the falls. One thing I wasn't prepared for was all the tiny fish swimming in the pool with you and they loved nibbling your legs. It was such a thrill. Being the edge of the falls like that is something I will never forget. And I wasn't as nervous as I thought I would be once I got in there. What did make me nervous was watching our guide skillfully walking forwards and backwards along the very edge, taking photos and videos of us. was still a little nerve-wracking, but I felt a little better having already walked it once. And we took our time as our guide told us about the falls and took us to cool viewpoints and allowing us to take more pictures. The local name for Victoria Falls is Moseotunia.
Because it was the dry season, we could mostly walk across the top of the falls without having to walk through too much water. But during the rainy season, which would be starting soon, it would be impossible to walk across as this part of the falls would be covered in water. When we got back to the resort, we quickly learned that there was a hippo grazing on some grass just outside some of the rooms. I was not expecting the first hippo we saw to be up on the grass at our resort. We kept our distance, but it was so cool to see. After lunch, we rested for a bit, and then we were picked up in a shuttle for our dinner at the Elephant Cafe. Come, 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 devil! Welcome, folks. My name is Aubrey. I'm a chef. Enjoy. The Elephant Cafe is such an amazing experience. You start off by meeting three of the rescue elephants, and you get to spend time with each of them. The staff were very generous with the feed bags. Typically, you each stand on one side of the elephant and they swing their heads back and forth as you hand them food. One particular elephant took a liking to me and refused to take food from Jessie. And when she finally did take some food from Jessie, she threw it on the ground. The baboons behind the elephant were quite pleased by this though. Let's go where the river's taking us. Over fields and through the country, letting go of everything but us. After spending some time with each elephant, it was time for our dinner. They told us about the history of the cafe. The elephants were rescued, but other than their time with the guests, they completely roam free and actually have trainers that are always watching over them just to make sure they don't get into trouble with local villages. The elephants even found an orphan baby and adopted it into their herd. Dinner was spectacular and we watched the sunset before catching our ride back to Victoria Falls waterfront. It was such an epic day.
We don't need a destination, let's go where the river's taking us.